expecting this morning? Yes. Yes. I just want to remind you what happened last week. We had backs getting healed. We had people walking out of a wheelchair to a pleasure they've not been able to do for a long time. We were seeing deliverance happen in the room. And I guess what? It was happening all at the same time. And for me, it's really inspired me to think, what is God doing with this house? He is raising a people to do the works of the kingdom. And it ain't about a guy still in the front with a microphone. It's about those who are filled with the Holy Spirit doing the works of the kingdom. And so I want you to ask this question this morning. We met as life groups. If you're not part of a life group, get involved in one. It's where you get discipled. It's where you can start to fan into flame the gifts of God that were given to you in the laying on our hands. And we said this to them. When was the last time you came into church and you intentionally steered your heart to the Holy Spirit and you said, what do you want to do with me today? And we're going to teach on this a little bit later, but I want you to know this ain't a service. You come to bring something, not just to take something away. And as you give out, God is going to pour back into you. So I want you to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit this morning, because it might be that he wants to heal the person who's sat right next to you. Okay, It might be that you're going to be the person who gives them a word at the right time that's going to see them catapult into everything God's got for you. Because if he can do it through me, he can certainly do it through you. Are you up for that this morning? That's what it's called. Being the church of Jesus Christ, where his spirit ministers through his people. I want to raise your expectations this morning. Let's just stand. I thought he got a strike. <laughs> you know, I want to share just one scripture with you that will raise your expectation. I don't know what church you've come from or what your previous experiences have been, but as for me in this house, we come expecting to encounter the presence of the Lord. We're not just presence by name, we are presence by experience. And we're creating a history with the Lord that when we gather together, people's lives are changed and transformed. May they are never the same again. Do you want that this morning? Yeah, I want that this morning. And so I want to read the scripture from uh, Luke 18. Verse 20, one small verse. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. I don't know why you've come this morning, but I hope you've come intentionally in the name of Jesus. What does that mean? I've come intentionally to meet the one who paid the price for me to belong to him. I'm coming to meet the one who enables me to boldly approach the throne of grace because he has cleaned me from all of my sin and the consequences of my sin. I've come as the redeemed to come and meet the redeemer. Do you need a touch like that this morning? Is that areas of your life that you say, I just need one touch from the king and everything will change with that touch. He's going to be here this morning. So where two or three gather, there's more than two or three. He says that I will be there in the midst of them even. What does that mean? That means that he is dwelling in amongst his people where actually if you fix your eyes on Jesus, you'll receive what Jesus has. And he has fullness of life, fullness of freedom, fullness of healing, fullness of provision. So whatever it is that is making you anxious this morning, whatever it is that's making you think about your life outside of these four walls, I want you to offer it to the name of Jesus knowing that you're not praying to somebody through the ceiling. He is stood right in front of you because where two or three gather, there I are even in the midst of them. Are you excited? Who needs healing this morning? Physical healing. Father, in the name of Jesus, they begin to worship. Their bodies will be healed without anybody praying for them. We just declare that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's going to be freedom. And He sends forth His Word right now and He heals them. So as you begin to worship, test your body out if you can. I dare you to find the pain. Jesus, are we ready to welcome the King of Glory? Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you, Jesus. Just fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at me. 
you just start to offer your praise and your worship to him because he's worthy Jesus we welcome you we acknowledge that we are your living body and as living stones we come together in expectation to experience your presence afresh oh Jesus you are the head of this house oh come and have your way Holy Spirit we say you are welcome in this place come use us come move through us come stir us this morning open our eyes to see Jesus rightly open our eyes that we would be able to exalt him for all that he deserves thank you Lord we just welcome heaven leaning in right now the way two or three are gathered he said that's going to be my body and my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail because heaven is breaking out of a people who truly believe that Jesus is who he says he is I want to declare that there are more angels in this room than there are people. We welcome the angelic host, messengers of wind and fire. And we pray you come and bring the culture of heaven into our life experience. In the name of Jesus. So Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, break off the limitations this morning. Break off what we think we're about to encounter. Would you take us into a new place in your presence? And the people of God said, Amen. 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 We're going to make some declarations together in this place today.
lift up your praises. From, a, from Psalm 118 um, that I was reading this week. You know, our esteemed leaders, Luke and Lauren, became radio celebrities this week. And it was interesting on the interview that the guy focused on the change of use of the building. It used to be a nightclub, but now it's used by a church. That's what he wanted to know about. I just want to prophesy this in the name of Jesus. They're going to be called back to do another interview, but it won't be about a change building, it'll be about change lives. Yeah. It'll be about restored relationships, it'll be about healed bodies. What is going on in Presence Church? Amen. Yeah. In Jesus' name, Psalm 118 says this. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. You know, we've spoken occasionally using the term end time church and this is what I believe I believe presence church is part of an end time church that doesn't mean we've arrived by any trip means but we have most definitely left I was thinking the other day that you know there is a tide rising within the church within presence church and here's something you know when the tide rises every boat on the tide rises with it and as Luke exhorts us right at the beginning I want to exhort you listen the tide is rising within presence church take off the limits don't put any limits on the Holy Ghost this morning rise with the tide whatever that looks like a different re a revelation of worship putting your hands up speaking in tongues putting your hands on somebody for healing as the tide rises we all rise with it so be expectant to receive something fresh as you rise in faith to the Lord listen to what Isaiah 40 says have you not known have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth he does not faint or grow weary he un his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the faint and to him who has no might he increases strength even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted but they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up the wind like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not be faint Father God if there's those in the house who are weary this morning, I pray that they will understand. As they remove the limits, they will understand the strengthening of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I just want come against the spirit of containment and the spirit of limitation. And we just release new wine, fresh fire, living water. Amen.
says the Lord, by my spirit, says the Lord, living flame, the living water, like we never seen before, by my spirit, says the Lord.
Jesus, we praise you. We lift up our hallelujah. 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 Sing 
the song of ages to the Lamb. A thousand generations. A thousand generations. Falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. All who've gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb of Your name is a highest, your name is a greatest, your name stands above.
been forgiven If you've been redeemed Sing the song forever to God If you walk in freedom If you walk in freedom And if you bear His name Sing the song forever to the Lord. If you've been forgiven, then that's great. If you've been forgiven, and if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to the Lord. If you walk in freedom, if you walk in freedom, and if you bear His name, sing the song
But you know, this is what Jesus died for. Is that there will be a people who will truly see him for who he is and they will love him rightly. The human heart was created to love the Lord. He is the beginning from the end. He was there before creation. All things were made through him, for him and by him. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He is the lamb that was slain but was resurrected three days later. He is the mighty healer and the great deliverer and the ultimate provider. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. He is your tower. He is your strength. He is your refuge. He is the firm foundation that the Father places your life on. He is the one that will receive you into eternity and abides with you in eternal life. He is salvation itself. He is life itself. There is no life that consists outside of him. This is Jesus. He is the comforter that comes alongside you when you need comforter. He is the one who champions you when you need to be one who goes out on to exploit. He is your strength and your power and your might. This is Jesus. He's the one who draws alongside you and he is the one who is beside you. He's the one behind you and he's the one going before you. He is the very word of God made manifest. He's the very light of God shining in the darkness. This is Jesus. He is the one who came from the very heights of heaven, descended into the very depths of the earth, and took the very nature of captivity captive, and he brought it into public and made a spectacle of them. Every power and principality, every demon, every lie, was taken captive by Jesus. That's your Jesus. Jesus is not an add-on, he's not an addition, he's not something you just join, he is everything. You want to know Jesus, you let go of you and take hold of him and then you'll know why you were created. That's Jesus. He is the resurrection and the life. He is grace and truth. He is the power and the wisdom of God. He is the way, the truth and the life. That is Jesus. He's the one that fills all things with himself. Every area of who you are is filled with Him. It says this, that all those who call on the name of the Lord, calling on the name of Jesus, shall be saved. What does that mean? That means that you become alive in your spirit, man. That you become alive to who God created to be. The very reason why you have breath in your lungs he makes you alive in your spirit now. But he doesn't stop there. He begins to flood your soul, your mind, your will and emotions. And he comes freedom and deliverance and abounding joy and peace is released to you. That's Jesus because he's the Prince of Peace. But he doesn't stop there. He comes with his salvation. Those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He heals your physical bodies. Because by his stripes you were healed. And every stripe he took, he took every ailment, every sickness, every pain, every cause of death. And he said, I paid a price for it so that my people don't have to. Remember, he's the truth. And the lie of the enemy says, oh, but I'm just human. That's just what happens to the human body. It's a lie. Because when you have eternal life, you have the life of His Father flowing into you now. Which means that everything has to come into divine order for how it was originally created. There's a great fight for truth. There's a great fight for spirituality. There's a great fight for what can make you feel whole 
joyful, peaceful. And there are a lot of things that look like Jesus, but they ain't Jesus. For a long time, the church had talked about God. They talked about the Holy Spirit. They talked about the gifts. And the name of Jesus was taken out of their mouth. Why? Because it's the power into salvation. The Holy Spirit is putting the name of Jesus back into the mouth of the church. Whether we are bold, knowing that he is who he says that he is. That's why we exalt him the way that we exalt him. There is no other destination beyond Jesus. He may be the doorway, but it leads to him. And there are some here who have built their life on a foundation that is not Jesus. It's not the victorious, all reigning and ruling King of glory. They've not built their life upon that truth. They've invited him in as an addition to be saved from sins, but they've never had him as the Lord of their life. He desires that you would know his resurrection power, but you've got to be dead in order to be resurrected. His church, his people have resurrection power because they chose to die to self and say yes to his life. The very thing that you were created for. I don't know what you built your life on. I don't know what lies you believe in. We all have them. But I want to tell you this, that there is one whose name is Perfect Truth. It's the name of Jesus. There's some of you here who just have perpetual sicknesses, just cycles of sicknesses. And you've just gone, well, that's just my lot. There is a name that speaks a better word. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word over your life and redeems all things, reconciles things in heaven and in earth. Your body has to respond to the name of Jesus. It's not optional. Your fear, your anxiety, your depression, your addiction has to respond to the name of Jesus. It is not optional. Holy Spirit, just rest on people. Don't look at me. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Holy Spirit, just rest on people right now. all about Jesus. I just speak to generational depression and I say you're broken in the name of Jesus. You lift it off. speak to heart conditions, angina, and I just say be healed by the name of Jesus. We just command genetic heart conditions to bow to the name of Jesus now. There's someone in the room as well. I felt it earlier um, with their ankle, where there's just continual pain over and over again from a previous injury that's just never healed properly. I just feel like the Holy Spirit just wants to touch that right now. Pain's gonna go. I just see it's almost like the bones haven't quite been healed properly, and it's just gonna recreate that whole area where you never have pain again. Where's that person with the ankle who's just never quite healed properly? Is that you? 
Was it from a previous injury? Yeah, I fell down some stairs and found the Okay, do I just stand up for us? God's going to heal you right now. Where's our life group? Turn around, lay hands on her. Can you feel any pain at the moment? No, not no. Okay, so it's something you would have to go and test out. Something you would have to test. Yeah. Okay, good to know. So life group, command that ankle to come into divine order in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit just flooded from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. That the healing of your ankle would be just but a sign of what God is doing in your life and bringing divine order. Things that you thought that couldn't be brought back into purpose and alignment, God is saying, I am the God of wonders who is able to do a measurable more. And you could ever ask or imagine divine order has been released into family, it's been released into finance, has been released into purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Is there someone here as well whose shoulder hasn't fully recovered either? And it's just, it's like the tendons still are really sore. You don't have full freedom of movement. Is there anyone here with that? Is that you? Just stand up for us, mate. God's going to heal you. From a previous injury? Some are prophetic happening right now that God's touching things that should have healed. Anthony, Paul, <coughs> just go pray for a friend. Is it him? Can you feel the pain now? So you're going to be able to move that. God's going to heal you this morning. It's his name. It's his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are people in the room as well who have been praying for years for children to come back. And I just saw just a deluge of prodigal children just coming back into the house of the Lord. I just saw the Lord saying that now is the time for the bowls of prayer to be tipped. And it's going to be marked with fire. And they're going to come back where they never leave. But they're going to come back with such a fire of his presence. That you're going to think only God could have done this. And it's actually going to be walking into the generational blessing. That you prayed over and even your parents and your parents parents prayed over and God is saying it's time for children to come home back into the house of the Lord for such a time as this. Where's the person or people? I feel like there's multiple who've just been praying. Brill. Brill. What's happened? He's not been able to lift his hand and walk his head for six months. Come here, mate. Come here, come on. What's your name? Jack. Welcome home, Jack. <laughs> so, Jack, just tell us um, what was wrong, how long you've had it, and what was your pain like? Uh, it's been about eight months. I fell on my shoulder. Um, yeah, just nice of being restricted. So, was it, was you in pain? Yeah. Sleep on that side, and that's the side that's on. So. Well, wow. and out of ten, what would your pain be? Not, not that you know this, ten will be childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say your pain was when it's really uncomfortable? I've been through quite a lot of pain through the body, and that was probably the worst thing. So, yeah. Um, what happened? I just fell on it with the dogs. So. And then just now, what's happened then? I can now put my arm. <laughs> Is there any other pain in your body you need the Lord to heal you of? No? All and well? Right, let's give the Lord a shout. Oh, the blessing. He has to be in the name of Jesus Christ. All freedom of movement and 
carry the weight of the call of God that was spoken over you in seasons past. And the Lord says, son, you put down a weight in the past season because of just even the weight of prophetic burdens and expectation. God says, I've been preparing you in the secret place. And the Lord says, now is the time to carry and run into the fullness that I have for you. He says, son, didn't I call you to prophesy into nations? Didn't I call you to carry my word like a sword? And the Lord says, I am putting a sword back in the hands of my son. And he says, son, you will run, you will run, you will run with the weighty call and the purposes of God. In the name of Jesus. We need a church whose heart absolutely throbs with the excitement and the joy of the Lord. We have the most eternal, glorious King dwelling in our midst and anything can happen at any moment. Who's needing a breakthrough? We've got a lot of lies in the house. Let's break off the spirit of lying. Who needs a breakthrough? Stand up. The Lord is in the house. Make room for him to be able to do something that only he can do. I want to start to pray bold prayers. Because in this atmosphere, God can start to do the miraculous in and through your life. Father, we just declare that as we delight in you, you grant the desires of your people's hearts. We say yes and amen. Yes and amen to every prayer and every request in Jesus' name. Jesus, move amongst us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shh. Ha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you need healing in your ears, just put your hand on your ears. If you wear a hearing aid, take them out. Jesus. You're the same Jesus who healed the deaf in the Bible. You're the same Jesus that's healed them in every move of God and every house of God who believes that you are still the healer. We just speak to those ears and we say be opened in the name of Jesus. We speak to the spirit of deafness and we just say be loose now in Jesus' mighty name. We speak to uh, every part of your ear, your eardrum, and we just say be recreated in the name of Jesus. The one who created the world, the one who was there, created through him, for him and by him, is still creating today. And we release in this atmosphere of heaven a new body part in your ears in Jesus' mighty name. We just declare perfect hearing, hearing like your youth, in the name of Jesus. Ha. You're going to have to test that one out. You're going to have to test that one out. Thank you, Lord. I just remembered a story when I was in Manchester. There was a woman who was uh, listening to us teach. On, it was about the prophetic, actually, at the time. And her glasses fell off her face. And she went to put them back on and everything went really blurry. And she took her glasses off and everything went clear. She put the glasses on and they went blurry. She took them off and it went clear. And she picked up her Bible 
with no one praying for her, just in the atmosphere of his presence and truth being spoken, the God, it's like he slapped the back of her head and the glasses fell off and healed her eyes. True story. I believe that the Lord just wants to touch people's eyes this morning. Who wants eyes to see like 2020 vision? I know that's not even, I think there's better vision than 2020 vision, isn't there? But hey, God, do whatever you want to do with the eyeballs. <laughs> Father, we just speak to eyes, corneas, irises, all the different parts that I should have listened to in biology. <laughs> I just release in the name of Jesus, healing to the blind eyes in the name of Jesus. We take the authority of heaven and we speak wholeness to your eyes. A restoration of short sight and long sight in the name of Jesus. I think that covers the basis. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Father, it will be a prophetic sign to them. The perfect vision that sees into the realm of eternity would come. Prophetic vision that without it, people cast off restraint, that people would know the way to go, that they would see the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Those with the ears, if you need to leave the room and go test it, go test it. Thank you, Jesus. Are we okay to wait here? Can we just sing his name? You sent forth your word, Lord, and you heal. Ears and eyes receive the word of the Lord. Shall not be turned void. Jesus. Jesus. might not be one that you feel comfortable with responding, that's okay, I'm going to release the word, you can feel free to respond. Uh, hepatitis, I believe that the Lord just wants to heal right now in the name of Jesus. This is a, just, it's not a word in life, because I know there are people in the room like this, just for transparency's sake, but um, cancer cell counts to be divinely reversed in the name of Jesus. I feel like the Lord just really wants to minister to people's blood. 
I just want to break the lie in that area as well, that your lifestyle means that you have to live with that for the rest of your life. That's called condemnation, and there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus, and you can have the fullness of his life. And in fact, he's going to take your blood, and he's going to give you his own in the name of Jesus. This is going to be one that you're not going to be able to test today, but you're going to go to the doctors, you're going to get a blood test, and you're going to try that out. Make it demand on the word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's some spinal issues as well going on in the room. Issues with the spine. It's almost like um, like vertebra is all out of place and it's like trapping nerves and that type of stuff. You can tell I'm not a doctor, can you? Where's a person with like the spinal issues, issues with the vertebra that God wants to heal right now? Where are you? Is that you? 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 Right, we've got three people. Life team, you've got some miracles to release. Jeff, just come out into the middle for us. God's just going to heal you. Jeff, if you just go around there, Lily. So they're going to come out into the middle for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that healing is in the house. We thank you, Jesus, that by your stripes we were healed. Ah, these spines are going to come into divine alignment right now in the name of Jesus. Pain is going to be loosed in the name of Jesus. There's going to be divine order that comes to the vertebra. Even where there is compressed discs, there is going to be a healing right there in the name of Jesus. Perfect distance and separation in those discs. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just speak to trauma through accident and we just break it off you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. There's someone here who's had a migraine even this morning. Just like really, really strong headache to the point where that we thought that all the lights were going to start to flash through. Where's that person who's been really struggling this morning? Is that you? Come here, the Lord's just going to break something off you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. 
um, vertebra crushed together. This is my medical language. Um, it's pushing the jelly out. <laughs> um, for about two years, is that right? Two years constant pain. Um, tingling all the way down the arms, pain that's even now moving up through the neck and the head. And it actually, you know, just that thing of not even being able to sleep on it, just the same as you with the shoulder. And I've said to her multiple times, I don't want you to tell me what you think I want to hear. I said, please look for the pain. Are you sure you're healed? And she's moving around and she's looking for the pain. And she says that it is all gone. All gone. <laughs> come back. That thing is not going to come back. You might knock on the door, but you might say, hey, Jesus lives in this house. Do what? Amen. Has there anyone been able to test their ears and notice a difference? Just want to give space. Have you been able to notice a difference? You can't hear the tinnitus. Wow. Amen. How long? Eight years. 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 Seven, eight months, God is going to restore sevenfold. What does seven represent? Perfectness, absolute completeness. God is going to restore all the things that you thought was lost and your physical healing is but just a sign of what God is doing in the house. Do you want that restoring? You got anything that you felt has been lost through circumstances? Stand up and receive it. Just respond to the word of the Lord. Father, all those who've said, this has been stolen from me. We release the expectation to see favor, a restoration of completeness and perfect restoring of everything the enemy sought to take. God is going to bring the increase. The enemy came, but like a flood, God is raising a standard against him, and the rivers of life are going to flow through you, and there is fruitfulness for you, there is abundance for you, and there is purpose being released over you today. In in the name of Jesus. Wow. wow. So Tennesis is gone. Anybody else with the ears? Anyone who needs us to pray again for the ears? What about eyes? Anybody being able to test? Like reading? Seeing what was that? Yeah, listen, you put a demand on the word and he just meets you in it. That's all it is. Um, just remember, just there, stories of dyslexia being healed where there's like disorder in the brain, God is just going to bring a divine order. Father, we just release, Lord, a divine order into the brain right now that is able to see things perfectly. Thank you, Jesus. I just see you opening up the word and just seeing things in perfect sync. Thank you, Lord. We just speak stillness to the storm in the brain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Put a demand on that, test it out. as well that there was a real fear of miscarriage and I know there were people in the house who have experienced this but I feel in particular that there is a real fear of miscarriage and the Lord just wanted to break off that spirit of death and release the spirit of life and I don't even know if you're pregnant now 
in the very early stages and you've not told anyone and I've not heard that word before but I always have this expectation that somebody even in the room is even pregnant now and there is just a fear that feels like it's just going to be robbed from you. I just want to release the word of the Lord that says that you will carry into full term and turn all. Oh, he's going to turn the tomb into the womb. Thank you, Lord. I just speak life and life abundantly. We just bind the spirit of death right now on the womb. And we just declare that what the Lord has ordained for life will come into fullness and completion. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we even just speak to barrenness right now. We just say, all be opened in the name of Jesus. That you would receive the Father's desire for your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you don't believe that Jesus is real by now, nothing. I hope he's ministering to your hearts. I want to give you an opportunity if you have not given your life to Christ before or you've not truly yielded your life to Christ because he was an add-on, I want to give you an opportunity to respond. Because he said he is the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, there is no other way to heaven. You know that, right? There's no other way to eternal life. There's no other way to the Father. He said the only way to the Father is through me. And he is the truth. Perfect and true. Like the straight arrow that will always hit the mark. See, when you fix hold him as the truth, all the other lies start falling off. The lies of mysticism, the lies of witchcraft, the lies of being able to make your own way, they fall away. And he wants to build your life on a true, firm foundation of truth that is Christ Jesus, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, that he actually comes and makes his home inside of you. That he abides with you. And what he does is he comes to abide with you that not only is he the way or the truth, but he is also the very life of God that you have been created for. Which means that when we have the waters of life flowing through, as if you've read Ezekiel 47, it talks about the waters that flow from the throne of God and it gets to the sea that is full of salt and it says it purifies, in other words, it redeems everything that isn't pure. The river of life, when it starts to flow through you, starts to change and transform your life. Not just physically, not just emotionally, but every area. Your family starts to come into the fullness of the promises of God. You start to walk in everything that God has called you into. And what we've bought into is a part-time Christianity, not a dying to self. Not a laying your life down so that he can raise you up. And I don't want you to leave this place being in the atmosphere of his presence. It says, remember we started, where two or three gather in my name, I am there even in the midst of them. You can meet Jesus afresh this morning. So I want to give you an opportunity. Maybe no one, maybe some, doesn't matter. If you know that you have not, never really yielded your life to Jesus Christ, where he has been not just your saviour from hell, but your Lord today and tomorrow and the day after, until you step in eternity, I want you to receive him afresh. So anyone in this room who can feel just the Holy Spirit prodding them to come and receive Jesus wholly, where they yield their life, they just lay it down on the cross and they say, take all of me. I don't want anything in me left. I want the fullness of Christ living in me and through me. Is there anyone here who wants to receive Jesus, not only as their Savior, but their Lord? Come on. Come on, give them a round of applause.
Christ with Jesus? Is there anyone else who knows that they're not where they are or where they have been called to be in the Lord, but they want to give their life to the Lord? Anyone else? I'm slow to rush because sometimes people just need the boldness to step out. I want to tell you that in this atmosphere, the Lord will mark you for a life that's going on like this. Fear of Holy Spirit. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Come on. This is the greatest miracle you will see today. The greatest miracle you will see today. Is there anyone else? No. I find it interesting that Jesus has no issue with waiting. In fact, he has no issue with going out of his way to reach the one. Do you remember the Samaritan woman at the well? What on earth are you doing here, the disciples said. They said, Aha, I'm doing stuff that you know nothing of, kids. And he was able to encounter such a life that actually when he was finished with her, telling her that God sees all of the things and forgiven her, that she runs back into Sychar, that Samaritan town, and she says, oh, come and see the one who told me everything about me. And her testimony stirred an awakening in the hearts of that town. And they said, oh, we're going to come because of what you've told us. And they sit around Jesus for a while and they say, we came because of what you told us, but now we believe because we've seen it for ourselves. These guys here are going to go back into their villages, their sidecars, and they're going to start to be a sign and a wonder that awakens a revelation of others around them. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone else? Last call. Not forever. <laughs> Last call. Anyone else? Okay. Let's stand. Let's just pray. This is kingdom work right now. This is the moment that the Holy Spirit loves more than anything. Seeing people come to Jesus. He is the destination. Both of these are people giving their hearts back to the Lord. And I tell you what, heaven is rejoicing right now in a way that we can never ever comprehend. Isn't it awesome? Should we pray with them and welcome in the family of God? So I just want you to repeat after me. Us together as one family. Jesus, we come to you. And we receive the forgiveness that comes in your love. We thank you that you said yes to go into the cross and die in not only for me, but as me, I declare that I am not under condemnation. I am not under guilt or shame. But I have been purchased by the ultimate love of God. That is Jesus shed blood. I declare that today, Jesus, that you are the Savior of my life and you will be the Lord of my life until I step into eternity with you. I fan into flame the call of God and the giftings of the Holy Spirit that were placed in me in a previous season and we fan them into flame that I would live a life as a child of God as a sign and a wonder of the kingdom of God in the places you send me back to I declare my life will never be the same again I declare that I will not go back to the places where I've hidden before but I will live my life 
fully yielded to the leading of the Holy Spirit for the children of God are led by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Come on, give him a round of applause. Fill him afresh. Just keep praying for him, Bob. Fill him afresh. Ah. Uh, fill him afresh. Fill him afresh. Fill him afresh. You have an unusual way of speaking about the word of the Lord. You have an unusual way of seeing scripture and just how it makes sense to you. And you need to know it's an anointing that God has placed upon your life. We fan it into flame in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you. Even the ability to write down truth. We just release the anointing of the scribe to be upon your hands in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just break off every limitation. Mm. I just declare over you that you are pure, clean, sanctified, reconciled. Thank you, Jesus that you are as he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just awaken that prophetic gift that's on the inside of you. We awaken it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a round of applause. Thank you, Lord. I think that we're only just seeing the start of what it looks like for heaven to abide in earth. I believe the Lord has been looking for a people who want to break out of the status quo when they want the real deal. Is that true? That actually, that every time we gather, that sickness can't stay in the presence of the Lord because he paid the price for it all. That oppression, because he has a name above all of that stuff, this is what the Lord is doing. And I want to give you an opportunity to sow into good soil. You see, when you see the Lord moving and doing something fresh, there is an opportunity to partner with it. And we partner with it in our prayers, we partner with it in our using of the gifts in the house of God, but we can also partner with the Lord with our resource. Yeah, revival costs money. You know that, right? And I know the Lord owns a, a cattle on a thousand hill and he can just fill the bank account like that and we can see all the things that we need being paid for. I know that. It's not about that. But it's about us being able to sow into fertile soil so that it is accredited to our account about what he's about to do. It's not about the amount. It's about what you associate with it. That you go, Lord, I want to intentionally sow a seed into what you're about to do, which is you're about to demonstrate yourself fully in this city in a new way. Does that excite you? And guess who the ministry team is for the city? You lot. You get to do the work of the kingdom in this city. That what happens in this room starts happening everywhere where you go. So I just want these guys just finish off just ministering to the Lord. Just want to make space for those of you who want to sow into what the Lord is doing. I want you to sow it in faith. The Lord loves a joyful giver. Don't come miserable. Keep it. <laughs> Trust me, you can't give enough for it to be worthwhile if you're miserable. Okay? Come joyfully, sowing in that you would have all things at all times. That's what the word says. So you've got envelopes on your chairs if you need to do that. They've got a gift aid box with details to sign. Details on the screen as well.
just as people are just bringing their gift, I just want to thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done so far this morning. We thank you for every moment that you've touched our hearts. We thank you for every healing and every miracle. We thank you even for those miracles that are still unfolding. We thank you for salvation and we thank you for freedom in our souls. We just bless your presence, Lord. Yeah, we bless your presence. It's the main thing. Jesus, just receive all the glory, all the honor. May your name be the one that is known. Be exalted, Jesus. In the adoration of our heart, we just bless you. We're thankful for your touch and your blessing. We're thankful, Jesus. And we just ask, Lord, just as you just minister your word, that you would impart something of your kingdom this morning. May we never be the same again. May you just blow out the walls of our expectations this morning. That we will live a life truly as sons and daughters of the Most High, led by the Spirit of God, access to every spiritual blessing, marked with the name of Jesus. Huh. That we'll be a people that they would say, we recognize that you've been with him. Thank you, Jesus. He's good, isn't he? Yeah, yeah amen. Amen. I think they're stuck in a loop. <laughs> <laughs> Should we give them a round of applause? That amazing kind of rest. Thank you. I think they were joking, they thought I was joking nearly a year ago when I said you might be doing worship for two hours every week. Um, turns out that wasn't true, was it? <laughs> Their poor fingers and voices, but yeah, we bless them. We pray that as they poured into the house, their house will be poured into by the Lord, right? We can't out serve, we can't out give God. He's going to have everything in order for them. So yeah, we bless them. I just want to share some thoughts. There's something happening. Um, here as part of this community where I feel like the Lord is um, forming a new wineskin for a new season. And I feel like um, we've been really intentional as a body of people to avoid the man of God syndrome. And you know, obviously we're going to see people who flourish in different gifts, etc. But there is something that we're transitioning into where it feels like there is more happening in the pews than there is at the front. And for me, I think that this is what the Lord is looking to do. He's looking at raising a movement of people. He's not looking at raising another church. And he's not looking at raising another man's ministry either, where everyone stays here and that one guy flies off all over the world. He's looking for a people who would go on the move with everything that he purchased for them so that they could go and redeem a city. You know, just even, I think the population of this city is about 260,000 uh, just 1% of that city coming into salvation would make you a church of 2,600 people. And that looks like success to the world. Oh, you've got a big church, 2,600 people, but there's 99% of the city that isn't in the house of God. And I believe that the Lord is just starting to shift the way that we see success. You know, it's not even about the miracles, it's the revelation of who he is. That's the beauty of this journey that we've been called into. So I just want to share some thoughts with you. I, I, I won't be too long. Um, but I, uh, I want to sow something into the house. And I want to sow something into you. Where you start to realise that it isn't about you coming to church to get topped up. But you come to bring something. That actually there is no one in this room who does not have the capacity to live the life that Jesus lived. Because Jesus said that you would do all these things and even greater. He was talking to anybody who followed him. It isn't the man of God syndrome. It's not the international ministries. It's anybody who truly believes that he is who he says he is. And then in turn believes that they are who he says that they are. That's been the biggest battle is identity. That's why you look at all the stuff that's happening in culture. People don't know what they are anymore. But Jesus has been speaking something over them and saying, I know who you are because I formed you and I created you. And we have this war, this narrative 
of identity because if you truly can believe that you are who God says you are, you will be unstoppable. Yeah. I believe it's why Jesus at his baptism, the very first thing he heard is, well done. Oh, sorry, not well done. He says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased before he ever did a miracle. Yeah. Before he did anything. All he did was is grow up in the secret place with the Lord. Yeah. Do you know that's your highest call? Yeah. To be in the secret place with him. To live truly, Psalm 91, where you truly abide with him under the shadow of his wings. That's where you're primarily called to be. And out of that place, you see the rest of Psalm 91 unfold in your life around you. Pestilence won't touch you. See, when you're so full of being who you have been called to be, no matter what the enemy comes to try and get on, you can't stay on you. You can become so oiled up that you become slippy. <laughs> I believe that's what it means when it says an undeserved curse shall find no place to lie. In other words, it's like an arrow or a bird trying to bang through and it just keeps getting repelled back all the time. And so I want to have a look at this very briefly. I've got no scriptures to come up on the board, so if you've got Bibles, mobile phones, or if you're like these guys at the front, they probably know it off by heart. Matthew 16, I want to start off with this. This is a... The moment where Jesus really lays the foundation for what it means to be the church. Presence Church is not a membership club. You don't just come and get what you need and meet with your mates. Or you can do that down at the local pub. And actually, we have bought into something where I belong. But how do you know you belong if you're not living the life that Jesus called you to? Otherwise, it's just you meeting and doing the friendship thing. And that's important, but it's not the main purpose for the church. It's not somewhere where you can just feel good about yourself, although that is a fruit of it. The church is not for people. It is made of people for him. Yeah, yeah. And we've had a servant mentality in the church where we've got to make sure that everyone's comfortable, I hope you are, that the worship isn't too long and that the word is relevant. Relevant to what? Because if it's outside of Jesus, it's irrelevant. And that actually what we've done is, is that we've tailored everything for the comfort of people rather than for the pleasure of him. Amen. The church was never an organisation. It became that, but it was never meant to be. So I want us to get back to the roots because I believe that that's the wineskin that the Lord wants to restore in this city. Where actually we are not an organisation, we're a living organism, a living body whose head is Jesus himself. And Ephesians says that the body will be the fullness of that head. What does that mean? When the church is truly who she's meant to be, it will be as though Jesus was there. Yeah. And do you know what? Because two or three gather, he is. Yeah. That's why we started off. So let's have a look at this then. I love the fact that where Jesus has this conversation with Peter, it's in a place called Caesarea Philippi, and it's actually a place where the God of Pan uh, was actually worshipped. It was known as the gateway to the underworld. And so it's going to be relevant in terms of what Jesus is about to say. So Jesus is very intentionally about to drop the bomb about what the church was meant to be at the very opening where it said that the hordes of demons escaped into the earth. So the surrounding is really important. So verse 13, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? That's the question that we all have to answer at one point. And Joe, if you've never answered that, there'll still be another opportunity at the end of today. Who do you say that I am? What do you do with this Jesus? What do you do with the Jesus when you start to see him doing things in our day and age, in this room that we read in the Bible? It's the same works. It's the same Jesus. What do we do with that? What do we do when we feel the awakening of our heart where it feels like... Uh, it feels like you're getting hot and sweaty and uncomfortable. You know that moment when you're outside like the head teacher's office and you know, or you're waiting to go home to mum and dad and they've had the phone call home. It's that sort of like feeling of just like getting prodded. What do you do with that? What do you say about who he is? And it's a question that all of mankind has to answer. So they said, some say John the Baptist and some say Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Now, these are people who haven't quite believed that he is who he is, who he said that he is, yet they believe that John the Baptist, who had his head cut off, 
about two years earlier could still be walking around. I mean, talk about faith for the impossible. But some are saying, oh, it's, it's John the Baptist. It's like John the Baptist's spirit has jumped from uh, now a headless man and gone into Jesus. Some believe it's like the hope of an Elijah returning because we often, no, we, we look back to what has been before and you can do that with past moves of God or past moments or encounters or experiences you've had with God. You might look back at your life and go, I remember when it was just going really well with the Lord and you pine for the past, not realising it's prophesying to your future that there's increase to come upon you. And then he turns to him and says, but who do you say that I am? Jesus is interested in your personal opinion. It matters what you say about Jesus. It matters how you respond. Not about how your parents or how your children or your friends respond. It's how you respond to the Lord. And so Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Yeah. Where are they right now in the natural in this story? They are at the gates of hell. They are at that place where Pan, the hordes of demons, are said to come into the earth. And Jesus says, who you say that I am, that I am the Son of God, that I am the living God who has always been and always will be. When you have that revelation, that is what I'm going to build my church on. The only reason that this is a church is not because we put it on the sign or we gather together. It's because we gather in the name of Jesus. That's why we're a church. It's because we declare that he is Jesus. Why I ask the worship team, go back into, we confess that Jesus is Lord, that he is the Christ. Why? Because it's the declaration that sets the church apart from any organisation in the world. And Jesus said, it's on that declaration about who you say that I am, that I am going to build my church. And guess where he builds it? He builds it right at the entrance points for hell. And he says this, the gates of hell shall not prevail. So he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. What he is saying right here at the, the meeting point of the works of darkness and the revelation of who Jesus is, there is an access that the church has that's built on the foundation of who he says that he is and who we respond to him to be, that we actually have access to heaven, that whatever has happened there can happen here. So it says whatever is loosed in heaven can be loosed in the earth. And that whatever is bound in heaven, in other words, what is restricted, what's being dealt with, what's being defeated in heaven, has to be defeated in the earth as well. So the very first ministry of the church is to be a people who know what's going on in heaven. Because if you don't know what's going on in heaven, you can't be the church. Because your role is to bind and loose what's already been bound and loosed in heaven. In other words, it's a ministry of authority. That you have authority to change the world that you live in and the gates of hell cannot prevail. What does that mean? You can walk into the most darkest environment and you are taking the gates of heaven right to the gates of hell. And the gates of hell go, I don't want, any, I don't want anything to do with this. And it backs off away from you. Because of who you said that he is. And upon this rock, upon this foundation, I'm going to build my church. It's why we exalt the name of Jesus over and over and over again. Because if we move away from that, we move away from the authority that he's always desired to have in the hands of the church. And that's why people go to church and they're never healed. There is nothing special about this house. It's just what he always ordained it to be. This is normal. Not abnormal. And some people will come, they're absolutely amazed by it, but it's not going to be long before it becomes their new default. And when it becomes their new default, they'll look at every situation differently and they'll suddenly start to think, actually, I have heaven solutions to every earthly problem. In other words, hey, where's the problem? I want to run in head first, knowing that the gates of hell is defeated and it can't stop the advancement of the kingdom of God. All because of the name of Jesus. And so Jesus really is the model for everything. 
You see, if the church is his body and it's to be the fullness of the head, we need to look to him to realise how to live this life. Because he said, you're going to do the same works as me. Well, you best use the same ways as him if you're going to be doing the same works as him. You know, seek a sensitive programme so that people feel comfortable when they're dying at the foot of the cross. Death is never comfortable. To yield your life to someone else, to actually lay yourself down for the purpose of another one is never comfortable. And so what we are finding is, is that the Lord is seeking to restore authority and power back to the house of God. But when everything is in divine order. That's why we have made the name of Jesus the very foundation of everything that we do. Worship. If worship isn't a vehicle to get us to somewhere, it is the destination. It's not to warm up the crowd so that we can have a sermon. <laughs> Because actually, if you encounter Jesus in the worship, where else is there to go? That's where we camp. So just quickly turn to me to Luke 4. I just want to pull some things out about authority and power. Luke 3. Verse 21. We're going to have a look at Jesus' baptism. We mentioned it briefly last week. This is what's triggered the thought. So Luke 3, chapter, uh, sorry, verse 21. When all the people were baptised, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptised. And while he prayed, the heavens were opened. In Mark 1, we see the same account. It uses a very different word. that's only used one other place in scripture. And it actually talks about how the heavens were ripped open, torn, rendered open. It's actually an extremely violent word where it was as though the natural realm was split into two so that heaven can invade into the earth. The only other place that you will find that same word you find in Mark 1 is in Matthew 27 when Jesus crucified on the cross. It says that there was a mighty earthquake that broke out and the rocks split in half. Heaven invaded earth at the completion of Jesus' ministry on the cross. And so there is a violence that happens uh, in the air. Remember who is the prince of this world? Satan, who's also known as the prince of the air. It was though the kingdom of darkness at Jesus' baptism was split into two and the Holy Spirit came and rested upon Jesus, not in part, but in fullness of measure. That's what John 3 tells us. That the fullness of the Holy Spirit, who is not a thing, he's not an atmosphere, he's not an experience, he's not an addition. He is the very fullness of the Trinity of God. And he rested fully on Jesus, who didn't see equality with God as something to take hold of, but knew that he was going to be sent to the earth in order to redeem the earth. It says that for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whomever shall believe in him shall not perish, but receive eternal life. So Jesus was coming to undo all the mess that Adam created in the Garden of Eden. And so... If you commit a crime, you got to do the time. And so in the same way, God wasn't able to take the punishment that a man had actually created. Therefore, Jesus had to come 100% as a man. It doesn't mean that he wasn't 100% God because he's always existed. But he humbled himself so much that he goes, Father, I will go on your behalf and I will leave my divine attributes in heaven. My glory that I've always had and I will humble myself to the point where I will be a baby in the hands of my own creation. Imagine being a mother to your very own creator. That's a huge miracle. And so Jesus grows for 30 years and he finds John baptizing. And as he comes out of the water, the kingdom of darkness, the prince of the power of the air is split into two. And the Holy Spirit that has the fullness of the kingdom of God in, because it tells us in Romans that the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So wherever the Holy Spirit comes in his fullness, the fullness of the kingdom invades as well. And this Holy Spirit, this fullness of the kingdom, rested on Jesus. He then is taken by the Holy Spirit in chapter 4 of Luke. And he is taken into the wilderness. And there he fasts for 40 days and 40 nights. And he overcomes every temptation of the devil. And at this point it says, Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
What does that say? If he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit, he didn't go with it. Because on the other side of that encounter with the Father to overcome all of those temptations, the truly laying everything down for the will of him as he made space, power filled his life. At that moment, as he returns out of the wilderness, Jesus starts to see his first deliverances, his healings, his miracles, and his journey starts for three and a half years to the point where he gets to the cross. Jesus is modelling something for us, that in order for us to be the true church that rests on the foundation of his name, he has given us two keys, the authority of the kingdom and the power of the kingdom. Right. Jesus first public sermon was he goes into the temple in his hometown in Nazareth in Luke 4 and it says that he finds the place in the scroll that he wants to read and it's Isaiah 61 and he starts to decree the spirit of the Lord is upon me he has anointed me to preach the good news to set the captives free the authority of the Holy Spirit that rested on him at his baptism came because of his commission you see, we have been given a commission for this city to prepare a house for his glory. And whenever you say yes to a mission from God, the commission, when we have submission to it, his authority rests upon us. So as we sit under the will of the Father, he places his authority over us. And if you remember the story of the centurion, when he had a sick servant or daughter, he says to Jesus and his disciples, you don't need to come to my house because I know what it is to have authority. If I speak to this soldier, he goes and does it, but I'm also under authority. And if he tells me what to do, I'm going to go do it as well. He was teaching a lesson that if you sit under authority, guess what you have? You have authority. And so Jesus is resting under the commission of the Father. The Holy Spirit rests upon him, the anointing of the Holy Spirit to preach the good news, to set the captives free, to speak to those and bring liberty, healing, breakthrough. The authority rests upon the church. Jesus said that he has all authority and all power. That means that me and you don't have any of our own. It also means the devil doesn't have any. He has all authority. So how do we walk as the body of Christ to bind and loose what's in heaven into the earth? With authority, we have to rest under the one who has full authority. And so when we acknowledge that Jesus is the Lord, that he is the Christ, and we yield our lives to him, it's not that we are losing anything, we are actually gaining because we intentionally step under the covering of his authority because he took all authority back and we get to live in the overflow of who he is. In other words, Jesus makes you look good. So we think we're good, right? We pray for someone to get a word of knowledge. He's just making you look good. It's all him. The only way that it happens is that I choose to sit under his authority that so when I speak as though he speaks. Remember what it says in Psalms? The angels take heed to the voice of the word of the Lord. It's not necessarily his voice, it's any voice that speaks his truth. So that's why when we say receive healing, he sends forth his word and heals them. It's as though the father said it. Why? Because we're sitting under the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, resurrected three days later, exalted to the highest place. He had the highest name above all names. And we sit under that authority. And he says, now you can start to be my church. Now you can bind. Now you can loose. But if you notice about Jesus, he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, what does authority do? Authority governs. Authority takes the laws and it releases and decrees them. Jesus was able to walk into a village and say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What type of statement was it? It wasn't a little quip that you put on a soundbite. It was a decree of authority that said, another kingdom is coming and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That what is now bound in heaven is about to be bound in the earth. Jesus was living the manifestation of oh, um, our father who are in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. That's what authority does. So authority looks at a situation where somebody is oppressed and it releases the kingdom decree that says that this spirit of death, this spirit of oppression has no legal right here and that there is a legal right for the spirit of life to invade and destroy the works of darkness. That's what authority does. But Jesus also had the power of the Holy Spirit. How? Through his encounter. So if your authority comes by your submission to the commission, where you sit under the mission that he has called us to be as the church, to bind and loose what's in, the, in, the, uh, in heaven into the earth, in the same way, power comes through encountering his presence. It's interesting in Luke 5, after we see the story of the guy with leprosy get healed, it actually says that often... Jesus went to spend time with the Father in the wilderness. Where did he go back to? Where he encountered the Lord and picked up the power. Jesus modelled a life for us that if you want to live a life of authority, sit under his mission. If you want to live a life of power, sit in his presence. You do those two things. You live intentionally for his authority and for his power. You'll be able to live a life that he called the church to live. Postured at the gates of Hades itself that cannot prevail when the church starts to rest on the name of Jesus saying what is loosed in heaven is about to be loosed in the earth what is bound in heaven is about to be bound in the earth yesterday me and Lauren were walking um, along a path uh, to Leek and uh, we saw two dead rabbits in trees the first one felt a bit of a fluke and the back, the spine was snapped out the back of it put in a tree it's like that feels a bit odd the second tree along there's another one there and immediately we goes ah witchcraft yeah. sacrifice that's what they do at springtime and actually they do it to release the spirit of resurrection not realizing it's the spirit of death and so what we did we stood in that place where there's been a sacrifice to the demonic of the bacon the breaking the back of these two rabbits and we went to war in the realm of the spirit and we are stood there decreeing the life of the kingdom that what has been released by the kingdom of darkness is going to be nullified and is going to fall to the ground and we start to speak life over the city and over the region why because we have authority in the name of Jesus Amen. how many of us would walk past and go oh Oh, well you know some people are up to some weird stuff I tell you what these people who are involved in that stuff have more of an awareness of authority in the realm of the spirit than most Christians do and what he's doing he's opening the eyes of his church to realize that we don't just walk by and hope that it gets better because nothing's going to get better if we just hope it gets better he has put a voice on the inside of you that when you speak heaven's heart and heaven's decree in response to the commission things have to start changing and so we went to war in that place. Why? Because the gates of hell cannot prevail. It's probably happened already, but we know witches are going to come to this building. Why? Because it's a power battle. It's a battle in the realm of the spirit. This stuff still happens. We'll find stuff in the car park because they're chucking it over the fence. It's okay. Because we know that this is the kingdom of God, the outpost of heaven. It's what the church is, the ecclesia, that's the word that he uses, is the governing of heaven in the earth. And he wants to open our eyes to see what our role is. There's not you sitting here, looking up here, but it's you recognising that you have the same spirit in you that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. And he can take you into the very darkest of places and bound what has already been bound and loose the life of heaven that's already been loosed through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Wow, that is the church. And so Jesus then models it in Luke 9 when he sends out his disciples and he says he releases them in authority and power. Authority what? To cast out demons. In other words, deal with the invisible spiritual problem, but power to heal the physical, the bodies, the breakthroughs, the miracles. God has given you the authority and the power to deal with the unseen and the physical realm. He then goes to Matthew 28 and he gives the commission to the disciples and he sets us up for what we've actually been called to do. And he says this. 
all authority is being given to me in heaven and on earth. Remember he took captivity captive? You know that same captivity that convinced Adam and Eve to hand over the authority that God had given them in the Garden of Eden? Jesus, as the second Adam, came and snatched it back. Came and snatched it back. In other words, the lie that the devil is all-powerful is a, really is a mirage. It's, it's a deception, smoke and mirrors. The body of Christ, the fullness of him, has the authority and the power. So he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore... What is that go there for? That go there for is a response to be who he's called us to be as the church. In other words, it is the submission to the commission. It's intentionally sitting under him so the one that, who has all authority and power suddenly starts to overshadow us. And do you know what happens when the Holy Spirit overshadows you with his authority? You get to walk through the streets of Jerusalem seeing your own shadow heal people. That's what happened when Peter, he grew in the authority of Christ. He grew in the revelation that if he abided under the leading of the Holy Spirit, the full authority of the kingdom of God could break out wherever it wanted to break out. He wasn't even involved. Do you want to live that life? And so go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. See, discipleship is actually about exponential growth. We don't just get people saved, we actually impart to them, teaching everything that Jesus has taught us so that they are able to then multiply as well. You are a part of God's great design and plan for this end time. Interesting, Jeff brings up about end time church. This city can only be saved when the church starts being the church. To go. Don't just come to church. Go out into the world. Do something where you make room for the Holy Spirit to move in power through you. That person you see at work who's on the crutches and you get catches your attention. Step out under the authority of the commission by going and allow the power of God to heal that body. To share the faith that you see somebody who's in absolute despair and you lay your life down to the point where you may even be embarrassed but you say, I'm no one who can fix all of that and you share the name of Jesus. You multiply yourself as you go. You make disciples. But because you sit under the authority and power of who Jesus is. We also see him commission us in Mark 16. He says, go again. Are we getting a picture of what the church is meant to be doing? This ain't about a gathering. This ain't about a club. It's not a country club. You don't pay membership. That's not what tithes and offerings are. It's about you coming to be resourced in the governing house of heaven on the earth so that you get the tools you need to go out into the world with authority and power where you can represent Jesus to a world that needs to know him. And as you are faithful to go, this is what he says will follow you. These signs will follow those who believe in my name. Whose name? Jesus. Jesus. What is the church built on? His name. What, whose name will they follow? Jesus. What's the church built on? Jesus. At the declaration of the name of Jesus, these signs will follow those people. They will cast out demons. That's the work of authority. That's saying what is bound in heaven. There's no demons in heaven. Therefore, you're going to be bound in the earth. The angels and the resource of heaven is loosed there. Therefore, it's going to be loosed in the earth. It's a work of authority. It says they will speak new tongues. They will take up serpents and they will drink anything deadly and it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. What will happen when you lay hands on the sick? Is it optional? No. Will. They shall recover. There is no option for that body to respond to the word of the Lord. The only reason why you don't see people getting healed is because you've left room for it not to happen. Because you believed a lie. He said, if you go in my name and you speak my name, when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. And I don't care what my experience has told me in the past. I cannot change the truth according to my experience. My experience has to align up with the truth of God. Yeah. And so he has given you power to step out. You make way for him to be able to flood people's lives and situations. That's the call of the church. But not only that, when you come 
don't just come to receive. There's nothing wrong with receiving. But you are a living stone in the house of God. In fact, it says in 1 Corinthians 12 that he's given you gifts. What for? For the profit of all. Who is he speaking to? He's speaking to a church that he says that they lack nothing in terms of spiritual gifts. But he says that the gifts are for the profit of everybody. The gifts that he's placed on the inside of me is not enough to be a profit to you all. But you, together with me, flowing with the Holy Spirit, can actually serve each other. So we prosper each other and we come equipped and built up so that we leave this place ready to go into battle to take what Jesus paid for. That's the call. But it's not only that. He then says in 1 Corinthians 14, When you come, come with a hymn, a psalm, a prophetic word. The expectation of this house is that you don't come for an encounter, you come out of one. You come with something to feed the house. Don't come looking to connect to the pulpit as some kind of feeding tube. We've done that for too long because all you're going to get is milk. But if you come out of the secret place with the Lord, where you've had an encounter with him and he gives you something, feed the house, pray for each other, open your ears and say, Holy Spirit, who do you have a word for me to give this morning? You have permission to move and act in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because wherever he is, his kingdom is going to reside. You have a responsibility to feed each other. It's not the pastor's job. It's not my job to feed you all, but I believe that the same spirit that is in me is the same one that's in you. And if you can just but believe that he has commissioned you and he has empowered you and you come into the house of God, not looking to take off the buffet table, but looking to be the feast that can give to other people the word that he's put inside of you to give. I promise you, you will see this building absolutely explode with life and miracles will break out around you. We saw it in life group. Four people have never seen healing when they prayed before. Saw the very first healing. Why? Because we fanned into flame the gift that was in them. And they took a risk and they made space for power to move and flow. Now what happens when 80 of us are able to do that? Guess what happens to a city? It gets turned upside down. You excited? Do you want this? Ah, let's land on this. Matthew 18. We're going to land on the verse we opened with. Whatever you loose in the earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind in the earth will already be bound in heaven. He repeats himself in Matthew 18, verse 18. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind in the earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by their heavenly father. Why do you come to this house? You come to agree with truth. We stand together gathering in the name of Jesus and there he is amongst our midst. Why is he moving in and amongst us when we gather as two or three? Because he is waiting to listen if we can partner in truth. And as we say yes and amen to his expectation, to his world, guess what starts to break out in and around us? His world starts to break out. So the purpose of this church is not for us to gather together. It's not to have the answers to all of your problems. It's not to feed your spirituality, to teach you the Bible. It's not to do all the praying for you. You come to this house as people who have the Holy Spirit resonant on the inside of you to come and bring to the table what the Holy Spirit has given you, the gifts and callings and the anointings of God that he placed upon you before the very foundation of the world. Ephesians says this, that he prepared good works for you and he's now given you the resource to be able to do it his authority, his power, his spiritual gifts but we do it for the profit of us all yeah. so my heart's desire about this house is not that we have the few doing the ministry but we see a true body of Christ rise up where the saints do the work of ministry that's the heart that you pray for the sick you cast out the demons you go out and get the lost yes. last week it was kicking off everywhere and I just stood it. People were mocking me afterwards because I was just like this, just watching. Because the body were doing the works of ministries. I had nothing to do with somebody getting up and walking without the wheelchair. I had nothing to do with backs being healed. It was the body rising up and being everything they've been called to be in Christ Jesus. 
That's the call of the church. And I believe that as we take hold of this commission to be this new wineskin, if you ask the Holy Spirit this week, what can I bring into the house of the Lord next week? He will be faithful to give you something. He will give you a word of knowledge. He will give you a scripture. He will give you a word of encouragement and exhortation. He will give you because he's looking for people who will make space for him that power will be able to flow. Amen. And then when you come again, you come not to be taught something, but you come to agree with truth so that heaven truly can break out. Because where two or three gather and they agree, the Father will hear and he will release it. Do you want to be a part of that type of church? You want to be the body of Christ? Let's stand. Jesus, this is your house. This is your body. This is your church. Holy Spirit, you have the keys to this house to do as you desire. We are merely servants in your house as sons and daughters. It is great pleasure to follow you. We just speak, Lord, life and life abundantly over our lives. We just fan into flame the gifts that have been given to us for the purpose of profiting all, for the purpose of coming into agreement that heaven will break into the earth. We just decree in the name of Jesus that this is a house of authority because we've been commissioned for such a time as this. And this is a house of power because we've encountered your presence. I pray, Holy Spirit, that we would be in a place that is hidden in this week, that we would come out of the secret place fully resourced overflowing that we'll be able to feed the house that this city would see a body of Christ that is truly being set apart for the work of ministry to bring the life of Christ to all that need it I prophesy over you that there is more healings and deliverances and breakthroughs in the pews than there is in the pulpit I prophesy that you will do the works of the kingdom of God because you will come recognizing that you have authority and power in the name of Jesus and the people of God said Amen Amen, amen.